Hello everyone, this is Let's Talk Top Tech on Thursday, 15th of September 2022. Um, we have a few topics um, so far, three proposed by Christoph. So I'll hand it over to you for now. Uh, let's start with the Dependa bot uh, stopping by our repositories. Um, actually, I, I forgot which one that is, uh, but I think it's um, something like S2I um, TOS repository, which has overlays for a few Python versions. And the Dependa bot stops by and is updating uh, these. Um, it is basically just a question. We don't have overlay support in the advisor manager of Kebishet. Is that correct? Or is, it, is am I wrong here? Should be supported. OK. Um, then then um, let's validate if, if that is really working. I'm going to have a look at the repository that these uh, things came up from. I've seen like six or so of the, of the same um, pull requests on triage party. Um, I'm going to have a look uh, which these were. Um, so Kebishet can update in an overlay, the, the uh, pip file in an overlay. That is the basic uh, functionality here. Maybe then it's just a misconfigured uh, list of managers. Is it is it statement true for the advice manager and the update manager? Uh, yes, I believe so. OK. OK, then I'm going to have, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and drop the issues that I had on my mind in here. Um, Kevin, could you have a look at that uh, then, please, why it's not happening? Maybe it's just reconfig uh, uh, misconfigured or so. Yeah, can you just ping, ping me uh, on the repository? Yes, yes. So the oh, yes. why it's not working is because uh, it's Python 3.10, uh, and uh, we don't yeah. have Python 3.10 in Kevishet. So you will see an ah. uh, issue in or uh, being created by uh, Kevishet stating uh, can't resolve this stack. Yes, um, unsure on my memory, but I thought it was for every Python version that were present as an overlay in that repository. But uh, that's a good point because it was um, definitely that 310 and Fedora, blah, blah, blah. And I think it was also 39, which would make sense because we can't do that too. Um, I'll double check. Good point. Uh, so, I thought it was everything. So the way I understand it, what happens is, Dependa bot is looking, so the, the trigger is different. Dependa bot looks at new changes itself. So as soon as something changes in IPI, it triggers uh, repositories which have these which have which are consuming these. But Kevishet works on active repositories. So if there is no action in there, so it will not update. But as soon as Dependa bot will open this pull request, Kevishet will also open the pull request with a similar change. Uh, but it will fail just for the Python 3.10. We we do have Python 3.9 already. Yes? Yes. I posted the link there with 3.9. OK. Um, so hasn't. Uh... So if you see that it's not doing, then there is an issue there somewhere which you need to fix. Yeah, I, I found. One of those that I was searching for, this is an example I believe, and if one had a specific issue, and, and Kevin was already looking at it, so, but for this one, I tried a, a gave a head update, which didn't actually work, and uh, the issue was this one, and Kevin already looked at, uh, apparently the, so the, the cause of the problem, it wasn't Python 3.10. It was like uh, an incompatible, inc incompatible versions uh, of the dependencies. But then can have failed to open the issue informing about that problem because it hit uh, the maximum uh, length of a GitHub comment in the API. And that's 
but that was just for this particular one. Well, actually, it's three on the same repo, but mm. there might be others. I don't know if those are the ones that you had in mind. I think, uh, yes, the minimal notebook was what I'm looking at. There's uh, Fedora, Python 3.9, yes, and Python 3.8. So, what is it? Uh, one blocker is we don't have Python 3.10 on Fedora. Second blocker is an issue with Python 3.9 on Fedora. Is that is that correct? Uh, no, uh, I think the issue is with the stack. So stack okay. can't be resolved because uh, one of the dependencies fight with another dependency. So update manager can't fix it. Ah, but depend about can fix it. So depender what the way I see it is depender what only well, I also looked at this some time back. I I checked that depender what just changes one package. So as if they say Flask, they are just updating Flask to three point eight. I don't know if they are updating all the dependencies with it. Ah. Or so, they, yeah. so they do do update the dependency of Flask, but su suppose Flask is uh, a dependency of something. So or uh, I don't know what it could be, but let's say, like for example, TensorFlow, and it's also there. Uh, if they update Flask, they don't see if TensorFlow would have problem with that. That's what that. I feel, but but I can't say for sure. But I think that's the reason why it, it is able to do it, and Kebishit can't. Okay. Um, um, sorry, just looking at that example, it did update a few packages. So I might be wrong, but I think those are direct dependencies of the package which they are updating. Maybe, uh, yeah. But we are about to check why dependent can and why we can't. But yeah, you are right. The problem was in the stack, like the failure was in the stack. So it worked. Okay. Okay, so um, again, uh, no support for Python 3.10 would explain one of the pull requests. Uh, the Python 3.9 is a problem with the stack because we update dependencies in a different way than Dependabot does, correct? And um, the other one we're going to have a look at. So, um, the other yeah. one is also with the stack. The stack is the yeah. issue. It, it should uh, be the same problem, right? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Good. Let's have a look at. Uh, I'll go through it uh, and and try to uh, understand um, what we just said. Um, if there's still uh, any anything I can't understand, I I gonna I gonna ask silly questions again. Nice. Uh, thanks for that. And I hit the wrong button, so apologies. I'm going to share that again. But meanwhile, you have the uh, open. Oh, I thought you were saying meanwhile, you all can go. No, I think we can move to the next topic, uh, unless there is any additional comment on that one. The next topic is the proposal to drop uh, or stop um, doing auto closing through Prowl. Yes, and that's actually not me. Ah, damn it. That's actually not me, but I think Max raised that um, issue with a little bit of argumentation. So, Max, why do you think it's bad for? Uh, us having the bots do the work. Well, that was one of these uh, brain dump uh, issue um, for over to to think about. And uh, well, I basically I think uh, the auto closing does not add much information. It just uh, say uh, this issue has not seen activity since uh, any um, well. Uh, Kind of arbitrary number of days, and uh, so so we we close it, and 
that, that's something I I've uh, encountered um, not only for for Todd but uh, on uh, other uh, other open source project uh, hosted on GitHub, and uh, it it never feels very useful to to me as a claim. Mm. And and also it it, it add a, a fair bit of noise uh, on the notification on the issue notification stuff like that, uh, and and you need to manually uh, for the for the issue which is quite quite frequent. So yeah, I think it's uh, mostly an, a net uh, a net uh, loss. Other opinions on that one? Uh, Kevin, yeah. I think you, you also said something. Sorry. Yeah, I added, added some thoughts to the bottom of it. Uh, basically, my thoughts were if something doesn't have any triage label, then that's not a reason to close it. If anything, that means that someone should go and at least look at it and, and give it a label. Um, and then we also have a bunch of pink triage labels, which I think could um, still have life cycle uh this would be like needs information um will un like unresolved won't fix um can't reproduce and i, I think i had a, there was one other one that I'm, I'm blanking on right now um but basically those those are issues that require some input from the user before they can be accepted as like uh things to work on um and i, I think if if they don't get the attention they need then then those are okay because we we don't we don't have any work that we can do for them so my thoughts are uh, sometimes it's handy to have this being closed by the bot not by us uh it could be that someone opened a request but never provided more information uh so it get closed because it's not needed anymore. Uh, and that's the viewpoint of uh, not saying from Toth. Uh, maybe Toth requ doesn't require this thing, but in general, like from Optic first side, people ask too many things and then they disappear. So it comes handy in their way. So because no individual is closing it, it just trickle down and closes by the time. I I, I still think that's possible, but it basically requires whoever is interacting on the issue. So like if I ask the user a question, I add the triage needed needs information, and then that starts the timer uh, for the user to, to add something. And then once they add something, that label would be uh, removed, and then someone has to come by and look at it again because it's not triaged anymore. Yeah, that's so great. Yeah, my two cents is um, I I I understand and agree with you the, the proposal in in an ideal world let's say, uh, but I think my my I would still I mean not terribly but I would still want to keep it because of reality let's say is that we have um, a lot of issues that you know. We don't get to triage or we don't get to update and they can stay there for a long time and kind of an indication an indication that they have been i mean it takes uh 60 plus 30 like 90 90 days for an issue to actually get closed so that's three months if an issue has not been touched for three months, it's kind of an indication that might not be that important. And that helps with, it helps with triaging, let's say, in a bit of a, I, I agree the, with the, the, the backlog label is for, like just because it's not something yeah. that we're gonna work on, like there's no reason to delete it if it's, if it's valid work. That's just my opinion. Mm. And re regarding triaging, tri um, if we say that uh, an issue uh, which hasn't been updated for three months uh, is probably not not important, instead of uh, closing it, we can just uh, use that in, uh, for example, in triage party queries, and 
and we have the same the same information. But that's why I I um I think the life cycle stuff doesn't add that much information, but because basically it just uh, say uh, this issue has uh, not been updated since uh, thirty day uh, sixty day, and that information is already there in the in the GitHub API. Yeah. It's, I mean, I agree. It's just that having a bot looking at this instead of waiting on us to look at this. Uh, but yes, we do have views actually in triage party that show this already. Um, I, 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 I feel like I don't have an opinion on that one, at least not a strong opinion. Um, I don't care about notification noise. It's it's it, it's a lot of stuff anyways, at least the, that is running through my notification uh, window. Um, maybe I have too many repositories um, because I, I receive a lot of operate first stuff too. Um, really having, having the bot um, escalating the close of an issue is uh, kind of a nice uh, warning sign because it indicates two things. A, there is unimportant issues, and B, the humans are not fast enough to to triage on them. Um, so maybe if it gets to uh, what is it rotten? I think the first one is rotten. Um, maybe if it gets to rotten, it should be an indicator for us. Oh damn, we need to do something about it. Closing the issue or pushing it to backlog is there a difference? Well keeping it open and having it in backlog is more obvious um, because then I can simply select for it or I at least see, oh, there's 15 million open issues. Um, there's something happening or not happening. Um, closing them takes them out of out of sight somehow. It's, it's, just, it's just gone. Um, don't have an opinion on that one, really. What would we, what would we uh, win by um, disabling the life cycle uh, bot, uh, we would get less noise, right? So what what do we need to pay for that? Do we need to have a more active look at open issues in a triage party, which have not been commented on, which have not been triaged? I think that that's the payoff, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think that we should triage any issue that comes in. I, I don't think that things should be left as, as not triaged because... Mm. Let's do it. I uh, As I said, I, I, I don't really have an opinion. It should work for us, right? So um, let's, let's do it and change it a little bit. Do we need a new um triage party view for that no it's 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 in yeah. any way not looking at the life cycle isn't it no but as, as max said you can already say i mean triage party already knows how long has it has been yeah. not updated so here we have for example this is relevant to the zero bug policy right bugs that have not been commanded on within two months so I guess that number should, with a zero bug policy, should go down. And for features, we have, you know, life cycle frozen stuff here that had not been commented over 90 days. Actually, some of them for almost one year. So, yeah. Um, let's do it. Let's let's um, remove the life cycle plugin. And um, uh, Kevin, does it imply a policy change? Uh, what 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 you were thinking about? I think um, the policy would be don't close things, don't close issues, uh, triage them. Either no, full stop. Triage them. Uh, that's the point here, right? We're either going to put them to backlog or we're going to plan them. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, or give them labels that are like uh, needs information and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I will add that um, 
instead of having uh, some kind of a passive uh, issue closing closing means we we have taken uh, some kind of a of decision either we it's not relevant or we don't want to implement that it's not just uh it has rotten because uh, we were, we have uh, we had no one available for that. Uh, yeah, correct. Um, that would be a better behavior for 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 us. Um, but you should count the cyborgs as teammates. So a teammate has made a decision and closed the issue. But if you just closed it. You closed it. <laughs> there's no. There's no like. Yes. 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 Um, yeah, let's let's do it. Let's let's uh, get rid of the lifecycle uh, plugin of Pro. Um, actually, I don't know where to open the pull request nowadays. Somewhere in Operate first, right, uh, Harshad? Yes, but I yes. don't think we should do this. Uh, no. The, the reason uh, is because it's not easy to just disable it on one one org. Uh, the Pro is working on five orgs as of now. And these are periodic jobs which are running in all the orgs. So if you want to exclusively remove them, then we have to exclusively state somewhere that, uh, which I don't know where, but in that JSON, we need to specify which repository to exclude. So I think it's a little difficult. Uh, OK, Max has already found it. So then you can go for it uh, in that case. But what I thought is, if, if we are saying that we are going to triage it, we should extend it by saying, if there is a triage label, don't uh, put the rotten label on it. If there isn't any label at all, then go for it. Uh, it means that we are never going to re re triage them, right? I, I think but it, the, everything should be triaged. At, at the very least, we should say it's unresolved, like that we're not going to resolve it and, and close it. I don't think we should just look at an issue and then just like let it rot. Yeah, we that, shouldn't. That should. That's what I'm saying. We shouldn't. but. If no one looked at it for 90 days, then what does that mean? That means that someone should still look at it, even though it's been 90 days. Or 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 say like needs information that in which case I think it can go. I, I still think it can go rotten uh, in that way, but I guess it would have to be more active since we can't set up any anything like that. But yeah. I mean, then it's all good. I think uh, Max also sort of found out the query, so you can remove that dot station. That I have no opinion on this. All good. It's so uh, uh, Hashad, What you're saying is a, it's a periodic job for the Pro deployment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's already found out, so it, that yeah. line, you just need to remove that, right? Just don't remove the other repository orgs without asking them. Yes, That's yes. the only suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Let's do that. Uh, let's see. Um, question is still. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. Question is still uh, still. Uh, that is uh, German spelling, by the way. Question is still. Um, do we need to mention that somewhere in the terms and condition? I I don't think so. And an issue needs to be triaged. That's it. Full stop. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if we figure out that we can't triage, we're going to close it with a. Uh, meaningful um, description if if we are asking for input and no input is um, delivered well that seems to me the only use case where it's fair to have the bot close that thing but that's now on us humans as i said um, we are buying the noise reduction by doing that additional effort manually humanly that's okay is that is that the summary Nice. Question. Just a question thinking aloud here. It goes against the noise reduction thing, but could we do keep a message but change the message instead of life cycling stuff? If if it hasn't been like keep the job or one for thought that if something hasn't been touched for let's say ninety days, instead of doing life cycle stale, it does assign um uh, someone <laughs> and you know to, to to proactively well do well proactively three, i mean three months is not very proactive but you know just to make sure that 
something happens. Think, the uh, random assign uh, we were talking in one uh, previous talk deck, uh, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. We 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 were talking about more being more proactive in assigning things. I mean, the bot cannot be. You know, it will pick. I don't know. We can assi assign the whole tot team or something like one of the aliases that we have. It cannot pick the right person, but at least assign someone to drive that forward. So at, at the very least, they, they show up in triage party. I'm okay with with assigning, but it, they they do show up in triage party if they're if they're not triaged. Uh, yeah, for for a certain number of days. My vote would be to remove it. I think uh, assigning would would be a overhead on uh, figuring out how to do it. I don't think it's uh, something already defined. Uh, so we would need to write more code for that. OK. But if anyone is interested, they can write. But I think going with the simple solution of removing it would just fix this solution. Yeah, and I, I think if you're going through triage party and you see one that's not getting any love, and you know who can who would be able to triage it effectively, then you can assign it um, just as a, as a behavior. Okay, cool. Anything else about that topic? Oops, the next topic just disappeared under my. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. uh, I I was looking uh, at the uh, timing. I think uh, we, we are running a little short. Yes. I said I put everything in the queue so that we can have a look at. Um, everybody, feel free to have a look at them, anyways, right? Um, okay. What what is the next one? CMBI stuff, right? Yeah, uh, the recurring slot about the CMBI feature. Uh, well, I think here was uh, a link to the new work in progress, let's say, project board for for CMBI. Um, I tried to add existing issues, created a few one, and some are, as you can see, drafted here with basically placeholder ideas. Um, there's, there's quite a bit here. I don't know if we want to invest some time now to review. Um, mm. No. Um, so what you created is basically a view on the, t on, on the issues uh, that exist anyways, right? I think most of them are from either the open service group or the TOS station anyway, right? And, uh, and you, we're, we're trying to generate a view which is focused on that CNBI uh, feature. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, except that there are more. I mean, part of it is in AICOE, AICOE org. Mm, mm, yeah, That's right. kind of a limitation because I was hoping, for example, link it because the project is in the top station um, org. For some reason, linked pull requests from ASCOE do not appear here. Uh, but anyway, uh, I took the GitHub feature development project template. Uh, so some of the decisions here, like iterations, what are listed here, are are one week. It's it, this comes from the template, the GitHub template. The idea is to of this is to, to help us keep a more or less rapid pace. And just to add that. I tried to capture everything here. I might have missed something. Something might be wrong. Something might be missing. Something might be, you know, again, we will probably not invest much time right now and right here to do this, but. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I think we should keep an eye on uh, what is really focus on the operator and how to deploy the operator. Um, because I think that falls off the ZIG uh, structure that we have, right? So um, all the other things um, should be somehow related to ZIGs anyways, right? Um, for example, if you're, uh, if you're looking at the, damn it, can't look straight. Meteor yeah, that's another that's build. another problem, by the way, because we also don't have SIG labels on on the Open Services Group and the yeah. ISOE orgs, so that's another exactly. limitation. And I think that is something that falls through our terms and conditions, our procedures, and um, all the CNBI operator stuff that might pop up. I I don't know if we need to plan for that specifically. I don't I I don't know. I'm open to do that, but I I don't have a strong opinion on that. It's five issues anyway right now. I guess maybe it's three. From my point of view, this is a good overview of what's happening in in that CNBI area and the the amount of the work uh, that is happening and how it is related to the the TOTH stuff um, that is also happening. And hopefully the work will concentrate on reviewing the pipelines, the tacked on pipelines, which are building container images for Open Data Hub and hopefully doing advice uh, then. Yeah, about the pipelines, there's only the draft issue here. Yeah, one, one of the things, one of the issues is to decide where, where do we do the pipeline development. I, I mean, it might sound silly, but I, in terms of translating this to an actual issue, where do I create that issue, for example? <laughs> is it in the Helm charts repo, the CMBI operator repo, in the Meteor operator repo? Um, um, might be a... hmm. good point. I for practical practicability, practical for practical reasons, I would go ahead and create it definitely in the TOS station organization. Mm -hmm. Um, which repository, yeah, maybe the Helm chart repository, but I'm unsure if Helm chart is really the way to go. Maybe we, um, haven't we created a new uh, CNBI operator thing, CNBI feature, open data hub CNBI repository? Maybe we're going to consolidate yeah, yeah. all that stuff in there. Being as well. Which which uh, SIG is responsible for that? I don't know. Can we, can we put it in DevSecOps? Because it's, it's, it's basically DevSecOps <laughs> having a pipeline for something. It's a very friendly and welcoming smile that I received from Hashad. I gonna I gonna count that as yes. <laughs> so, sick DevSecOps. There's also yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, under that, there is a working group which uh, has a uh, stop in it. So, yes. What did we just do? Observability, and we run uh, pretty late, right? So maybe we should review the the um, ZIG grooming sessions. Maybe if it's additional work, it might lead a little bit of extension on the calendar. It's probably actually a work. I think I should mention it should probably be a working group instead of a ZIG. Yeah, no, that's correct. We don't want right. the whole overhead of. <laughs> I, I I believe we don't want the whole overhead of creating a working group and stuff. And yes, it's just known known to everyone that in sec sec devs so and there are a few people working on it, but we can create in meetings for exclusively for CNBI. But I thought we were doing this call as exclusive meeting right for this yeah. type of grooming and things. Like yeah, it feels like when, when we're going to talk about pipelines, um, we're going to review the existing Meteor pipelines. We need to have a look at, um, I think there's an advice part in the Meteor pipelines by now, 
or it, it's maybe just a ping to to us, but it's not really taking the advice, right? So that needs to uh, be a little bit um, uh, needs a closer look. Um, if if we are looking at one of the use cases of CNBI, where we're gonna say I need Python three eight and that set of uh, modules, that is exactly where where the advice kicks in, right? Because um, maybe the user says I need pandas one two three. We have some suggestions. Maybe the user says I need um, I don't know uh, uh, I need PyTorch and TensorFlow. That is where we need to send back um, uh, uh, an advice and do something on the user interface. So it feels like if we are coming to the topic of um, the Tekton pipelines really really doing the work, it, it, it would be good to move it off this call and put it into the um, working group or in the in the ZIC. Um, because I think uh, from the last retrospective on last week, we still have the uh, action item to have more tech talk on this talk, um, things that we learned and, and stuff like that. So we should free up this time on on this talk and, and move the CNBI work to DevSecOps. Uh, just just saying <laughs> so if you if you think it's completely wrong everybody uh, speak up right it's it's just my thought well we kind of went over time in the seat of sec call already if you are there at this thing might be a bit too much but... yeah we we don't have any calls on Wednesdays. I think we just have a scrum. Maybe we should include another call there, uh, because the working group call used to stay there and it's yeah, not anymore, point. right? We can create it. Yeah, I'm happy. Um, like like four o'clock Eastern Standard. Oh yeah. Oh. Any time. Which... Oh damn it! Four o'clock a.m. It's a European four o'clock, right? <laughs> Cool. Yeah, let, let, let's try that out. Really um, get into the groove of uh, doing that CMBI stuff, um, focusing on the pipeline, focusing on TOS uh, guidance integration into these pipelines. Um, I'm pretty sure the topic how to feedback to the user interface uh, will be interesting, and and really push from from our side, from our ZIG DevSecOps into the. Uh, PEP. There's an open data hub working group on the same topic, right? So we should figure out what the feedback loop with these uh, guys is. Yes. Good. Okay. I'm happy on that one. So uh, current state is basically um, we have a fancy operator. Uh, we can deploy it to operate first to the OS climate cluster, right? So that feature should be available. Uh, not doing any uh, open data hub dashboard integration. So we are staying with OC apply custom resource, blah, 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 blah. We have a bunch of pipelines, uh, basically pirate style rubbed together from Meteor, from our own. Uh, I, I don't know if we have taken AIC, VCA, CI pipelines also, no? Okay, um, but we have a bunch of pipelines which are fulfilling some of the use cases in a, in a very basic way. So in general, it feels like um, nice, nice state, nice uh, current state. And um, Pep, what was our plan? Show up next week on the Open Data Hub uh, community, blah, 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 and present that stuff, right? Yeah, that's the yeah. proposal. Any any additions to what I just said? I I was supposed to get that uh, helping deployment thing, so I'm yet I'm still on process to it. So hopefully, we'll be there by month this week. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I put an interfering uh, comment in that pull request uh, that you created. Um, 
felt to me like uh this, this is like a bermuda uh triangle either we're going to comply to operate first rules or we're going to be clean on the operator design or we're going to adhere to the uh, kf dev way of installing things we could be wrong uh we will be wrong in any case so let, let's see but i think we are on a good trajectory right we we are able to deploy that thing in some way yes cool we're slightly over time any final comments about this topic or anything else how uh, do we is we have reached the time limit right it's already yeah but uh so if at least if we'll have 10 more minutes i have one question regarding the uh, like not like knowledge share mm -hmm. regarding the error we are facing i think it would be good to have views of my and max on that so if there is time i can i would like to talk about it go ahead uh, so there is the graphing issue happening. It trickled down to storages, and there is this pull request in storages, which was open today. It's being talked about in there. Uh, there is another pull request, which was open in license solver. The issue is coming for all from license solver. Uh, so either we need to clean up license solver to fix these things or, uh, and then fix the storages. But that's the minimal thing, which we'll do anyway. One of these pull requests will merge and it will resolve the issue for now. There is a bigger issue which I noticed yesterday that's from storages and that's what, what I wanted to talk about. So if we notice the license solver, uh, the pattern of license solver is license name, license version, and uh, and its identifier. And it's really these three bits. And these three bits are uh, not unique, at least not listed as unique here, which I see, which I think is an issue because in database it will with, so the way it works is uh, a solver gets scheduled. Solver basically it uh, iterates on a package. So let's keep example TensorFlow. It goes through TensorFlow. It will extract the information of licenses from it and show this as a manifest in, in that result manifest. So next, another package will resolve. That's a flask and it will also have this uh, package license, right? Suppose they both have MIT package license. Uh, if this, these three conditions are not unique, then what will happen is the MIT license will be inside the database multiple times because the primary key is just the ID. Uh, and uh, this seems to be an issue of uh, bloating the database. So uh, do you think? Uh, isn't isn't the identifier per definition of uh, SPDX uh, unique? That should be our, our our primary key, shouldn't it? I saw that. I looked it. Sorry, Max. Uh, I looked into it and I saw it is also same multiple places. So ah. MIT can have MIT three point one three point zero, and multiple packages can have MIT three point zero. So it should be many to many to one, one. mapping, yes. yeah, instead of uh, like these kind of things. Uh, yeah, Max, I saw you were commenting something. Uh, no. I'm... Okay. Sorry. Okay. So yeah, that's what I feel. So we should make this unique. Just wanted to share that thing. And if you have any opinion on there, we can look at it. The reason why I wanted to do this today is because it's kind of critical to get this in by tomorrow so that we are ingestion is back on track. What did you say was the um, primary key we use currently? It's just the uh, ID, which is an auto-incrementer. 
which is one, two, three, four integer. What is what is ID that 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 is uh, provided by uh, um, what is it called SQL. alchemy? Yeah, it's just SQL ID, uh, ID right? Like each ah, each oh. each row has ID, right? That that ID, and it will anyway be. It's already it's normally anyway unit, and it's been named as primary key. Yeah. Uh, also, the thing is, none of these things can be primary because they are not they are. Uh, so MIT, if, if we say license name is primary, it can have multiple uh, identifiers and things like that. So that's what I think. All these three things should go as a unique tuple. So could it be like the primary key, um, the start of the SVDX identifier without the version? Why? Without the version, I mean the the SPDX SPDX identifier should be uh, globally unique, and, and the uh, SPDX database, and it should identify one specific version of the license, shouldn't it? I don't know if license solver takes into account the versions of the license. Ah, okay. That was a question. So I, I see. I yes. Uh, we can look at it uh, and take a decision. Um, let's give me one second. I'm not logged in. I can share the data, at least a little bit. It, it basically just has to change it into a, a, you just reference it, right? In, as in the Python packet version. So like the same way we have for uh, package index, you reference the, just the single ID. Yes. yes, I think therefore the what Hashar proposed is a fallback in any case, right? Um, taking these three fields as the primary key should be good in any case. I don't know how this will paste, but bear with me. Okay, paste nicely. Uh, can we switch to that view? Um, uh, sorry, document, Pep. Can, can you go back to the tab? The I pasted something there, if you scroll down there. So if you look at this thing, uh, it is the legit thing, right? Uh, if you th see the three and five, both are same. And also four and six. And I feel like we can't keep any of them primary key. That's what I felt. But we, I might be wrong. The problem uh, is that those made it here duplicated in the first time, right? So that's. So no. I mean, the problem was that those like three and five made it twice into the database, right? So that should be fixed. Yeah, that is the question here. Uh, how do we want to fix it? Which do we want to fix it with just saying one of them is a primary key? My suggestion is to make this tuple as unique. That's that's what I was saying. And and leave the ID as the primary key still, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was suggesting. Yeah. And I wanted right. approval and thoughts from others as well if you feel that's the right method or or else we will stick to talking in the GitHub. I, I think that that makes sense. Maybe my two cents. I'm not. I, I should say I'm not too familiar with the database yet. So, but if you need something by tomorrow, probably that approach is the approach I do at the cleanup. I, I'm assuming that it's easy to make sure that the references get fixed as well. To the yeah, both of them will go in together. So there would be a, a fix in the actual logic, and then there would be a batch of fixing the data in the database. Right. right. Maybe longer term, though, I still think it's worth exploring a proper key, let's say, if, if, or, or at least I'm wondering again, how not knowing much about this, how how did this happen actually? <laughs> so, 
and it makes me think that there must be something basically what happened is during during the sync instead of doing git or create a row it created one every time so it should have tried to find a row with that value first only right. create that's what i mean to reference if you if we had the primary key properly defined that would have failed yes so yeah. that's no 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 if, if we had the unique constraint properly yeah. defined it would have failed yeah well yeah. okay right I mean, it wouldn't fail. It will, it will pick the same thing, right? It wouldn't fail. The oh, get, it automatically picks. Yeah, yeah, thought... get, it's a get and create, right? So as you said, so it will yeah. get that. So it will not fail. It will get the right. But if you if you made the same call that caused the extra rows before, um, it would fail because that was just a create. Because get and create are both same. Yeah, yeah it's, that, a one, that, it's a one. Yeah. An integrity error, I think, something like that. Yeah. So it, there's, there's a problem in sync where it doesn't call get or create. So, this, so that needs to be fixed, right? Uh, uh, I mean, it wouldn't fail because the call is get or create. It's 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 a function. So it checks if the if the data already exists, it will just pop up the ID. If it if it doesn't, yeah. then create a new thing and pop out that ID. So where would it fail? Even no, I'm just confused on, on why it's creating multiple if that's already the call that it Oh, yeah. Has. No, right now there is no unique key. So the, the unique key is only ID. So, so if you say MIT, oh, MIT, oh, MIT, oh, oh, oh. there is no unique. I so you keep on creating and it will say, OK, here is the new unique key. Got it. So that's it, why we're saying we need to oh. get based on the unique uh, yeah. key. Yeah. So we need to pick one of these things. Uh, yeah. I don't. I, I think there shouldn't be one of these anyway, unique primary. Uh, that's what yeah. I feel, but I'm. Also, this everything is new to all of us, right? We we didn't pay too much attention to the license order at, at that moment, uh, so that's why. So I'll I'll show you. Uh, just if if people have don't have time, please feel free to uh, jump off uh, from the call. Sorry about taking this much time. Uh, so there is this. If you see this thing, right? Um, I'm going to copy. Is it is it that the the SQL alchemy schema is not good enough? That that's the the root cause for the problem we are talking about here. Yeah. Now we are just discussing on what's the fix. Is the yes, fix. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I ju just wanted to understand the root cause, and that that's because it's not a primary key over these three uh, columns, and that is because uh, the uh, scheme seems to be not good enough. If you look at these values, based on this, if we say this is primary key, um, let's see, maybe it's all unique. That would be good enough. Yeah, I think that is what I tried to say. Um, the SPDX identifier is globally unique. Yeah. That should be our ID and our primary key and our whatever. Uh, uh, right, you're correct. All right, so then we'll just make that as the uh, the unique key. A unique constraint. Yeah. I mean, primary key, right? Let's see. Okay, so. Is it SQL 92 we are talking about here? <laughs> uh, I just wanted to share, look at the data. That's great. Let's make one of them as unique and stay with that. OK, thanks. I think that solves it for the long term as well. And we're going to create a batch job, which is fixing all that stuff? And the L uh, so LMBIC should fix that, I think. That, that should be the migration, no? Yeah, the LMBIC migration should yes. fix it. Uh, but but that is a little bit more complicated migration because we need to look up all these in the first table uh, four and six like uh, entries and generate from, from the, yeah in the yes okay package version. Oh, nice nice fix like the references as well yeah really okay cool. Uh, so the good thing is because these are primary keys, so they are foreign keys, and the another 
stable, so it becomes easy right. to. But they were referring keys to a different field, so I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's a big change, and I was just wondering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. I think it should be okay. able to fix it. Cool. Could you bring that yeah. up again uh, next week, Harshad? Because I'm I'm pretty keen on that um, uh, migration then. Yeah. Because I don't I don't like that. It, it, you don't like that. Uh, it feels complicated. But uh, again, uh, SQL ninety two is something that is uh, thirty years old, and that might have been the last time I was looking at stuff like that. So I'm just curious. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for the time. Thanks for that. Okay. Let's stop here then for today. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. See ya. Thanks, everybody. Thank See you. Ya. Bye. 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 Bye.